Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I am Tom. Hey, it's day two of our literature unit, and it's actually one of my favorite books、uh, for detective novels.、Um, I can't say I'm a great big fan of crime or detective novels. I do like suspense, and I like trying to figure things out. But、um, Agatha Christie is is one of the best writers out there. And she's been gone for a while, but boy, was she productive while she was here! We're going to find out how productive when we talk about her life. Right, and remember, last time we were talking about the plot of the story, which you probably、uh, pretty much understand. And again, we did not give away the the ending、uh, because we want you we want you to figure this out yourself, or watch the movie, or read the book、yeah. yourself. But、uh, as、uh, Stephanie just said, we're going to be talking about the book itself today. And we'll talk about Agatha Christie. So let's get to it. Let's、uh, read the entire contents of our lesson for today, and we'll be right back. First published in 1939, and then there were none, is a mystery novel widely recognized as one of the masterpieces by Agatha Christie, or the Queen of Crime. Famous for creating two fascinating detectives, Hercule Poirot. And Miss Marple, Christie established herself in the realm of crime and mystery literature. Other classics among her productive output of 66 detective novels include *Murder on the Orient Express* and *The Murder of Roger Ackroyd*. With her profound understanding of human psychology and her complicated crime narratives, Christie's works have impressed mystery fans worldwide. And then there were none. Explores themes of justice, guilt, and retribution. Its tightly woven plot compels characters to confront shameful deeds from their past under life-threatening circumstances. Such is the novel's enduring appeal that it has inspired numerous adaptations in film, television, and theater. The 1943 stage play adaptation, written by Christie herself. Offered an alternative ending. This change to prove a few characters innocent highlighted her flexibility and sense of what theater goers sought for entertainment. Christie creates suspense in the story through the use of the closed circle of suspects narrative technique. By confining characters and revealing that the killer is among them, she deepens the mystery. Focus on a limited pool of suspects pulls readers into a mind game of analyzing details in pursuit of possible clues. This approach is mirrored in contemporary works such as the 2016 Taiwanese TV series "Close Your Eyes Before It's Dark," which similarly locates characters with an unidentified killer in a closed setting. Pioneered by Christie. The technique continues to shape the mystery genre and prove her lasting literary influence. Okay, folks, let's dive in.、Uh, first published in 1939. Yeah, we're going back in time. And then there were none. Is a mystery novel widely recognized as one of the masterpieces by Agatha Christie, or this is her、um, this is her nickname, Queen of Crime. Uh, a masterpiece is one of the best pieces you've ever produced as an artist. It doesn't have to be a book or a piece of writing. It could be art. It could be maybe、um, you make beautiful clothes. It, it maybe you make、uh, different things. I have a friend who's now is learning how to make guitars.、Mm. So whatever you do, whatever you've produced, your best piece is called your masterpiece. But we typically use these for people who are famous artists, right? So、uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is his masterpiece, and you can use this to apply to different fields in writing and art and music、sure. or whatever. And she's also referred to as the Queen of Crime, and famous for creating two fascinating detectives. Hercule Poirot. Poirot. I hope Hercule I said that right. Hercule Poirot. Poirot. He's actually、uh, really French, but and they do say his name Hercule Poirot, but Poirot. we don't have to do the French R. But Hercule Poirot is more the English. I the, think he's actually actually Belgian, but、uh, there's a part of Belgium where they speak French, 
Uh, so、uh, that's one of her detectives,、uh -huh. and then she's got Miss Marple,、yes. who's another detective. So I guess she uses these characters quite a lot in different books. I've always thought Miss Marple was actually her.、Mm. You know, I don't think. Yeah, I think it kind of represented who she was in real life. But anyway, they're really smart detectives, and they're、uh, usually one of them is involved with, with her books or novels if you read them. Right, and it goes on to say she established herself in the realm of crime and mystery literature. So here, realm is just sort of a spectrum, a scope, or a range.、Uh, in this particular case, I guess it's referring to、uh, the genre of writing. It's、uh, crime novels and mystery novels.、Uh, this would be crime literature or mystery literature. They're very similar. Yeah, and if you wanted a synonym for realm,、um, because it's kind of hard. I would just say in the world of crime and mystery literature. So this is kind of her、uh, domain. This is where she does her best work.、Um, oddly enough, even though Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple are two of her very famous、uh, detectives in her books, and then there were none. They do not appear. So,、uh, and then there were none does not include those two kind of crazy characters. But if you saw. Let's see, Murder on the Orient Express. It came out several years ago.、Um, it was、uh, done very well. Uh, uh, that was really well done too. The guy who plays、um, Hercule Poirot is a famous director. Do you know who I'm talking about?、Uh, no, I thought maybe you're talking about Johnny Depp, but、uh, no. he's not a director. <laughs> no, no,、um, he's a little older. He directed and starred in Hamlet a long, long time ago. I think he's probably in his sixties now, but his name is Kenneth Brana,、uh, Brana, Brana. It's kind of a weird spelling. So,、um, but he's he's、uh, always Hercule Poirot、mm. in the modern day things. He's funny. Anyway,、uh, you might want to look into some of her other classics. Here it says she's got classics among her productive output.、Um, There's a word we use for people who produce a lot, as writers in particular, and we call them prolific. Prolific, P R O L I F I C, prolific, just means they produce lots and lots of stuff. A lot of writers get、uh, what is it? Writer's block, where they can't think of anything, and they'll force themselves to sit in a room and they can't write. It's it's kind of a lonely existence. Let's be honest, to be a writer. Output. Is the opposite of input. So if your boss wants you to input a lot of data into the computer, you're probably going to be stuck there entering figures and whatever they've got you inputting. Output would be what that computer spits out as a result of what's input into it. Now we have AI, and so AI has been、uh, programmed, and a lot of things have been input into AI. So now AI can output. Its own stuff based on what's been input into its system. Right. So she was very productive. She had a high output. She wrote sixty-six detective novels, and some of them include Murder on the Orient Express, as you said, and another one is entitled The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I must confess, I haven't read much of Agatha Christie. I think I read one of her novels back in high school.、Mm -hmm. I think the title was Passenger to Frankfurt,、hmm. and I don't really remember it at all. But in any case,、uh, yeah, I'm not a really a great reader of detective novels, but、uh, I have read some, and they can be fun because they have a lot of suspense. Yeah, and you don't know who did it, so you got to find out. You got to keep on reading to find out what happens next. And the next sentence here says. With her profound understanding of human psychology and her complicated crime narratives, Christie's works have impressed mystery fans worldwide. So she has a profound understanding of human psychology, which means she has a deep, complete understanding of how people think. That's important if you're writing detective novels because you really have to get in the minds of these、yeah. people to understand why they think the way they do, and also、uh, she.、Um, Has these、uh, complicated crime narratives, so it's not just real simple stories to read. Lots of things are happening, and you really need to pay attention. Yeah, there are a lot of details, and that's why sometimes、uh, Hercule Poirot、uh, is funny because this man notices the smallest things that normal people wouldn't. That's why he's a good detective.、Uh, Tom, you said something that reminded me of a phrase we use for detective novels. 
and we use incorrect grammar. So there you go. We call them a who done it. Who done it? That's right. And it's bad grammar. We do it on purpose because it's fun. So say I went to a movie this weekend, and my friend says, "Hey, what did you do this weekend?" And maybe I went and saw a mystery or a detective movie or some sort of suspense film. And you could say, "I went and saw a Who Done It movie or a Who Done It film," or it could be a novel. Um, what What did you finish reading last weekend? Oh, it was a Who Done It. We use it a lot, so be prepared. Uh, indeed. So again, these are detective novels, and she's、uh, produced quite a few of them.、Uh-huh. And again, she knows what she's talking about because she has this profound understanding of human psychology. And of course, her plots are very complicated. So mystery fans have been impressed by her works. For many decades. Now, here in the next paragraph, it says, "And then there were none." Explores themes of justice, guilt, and retribution. So these are some of the themes, or the concepts, or ideas that are presented in this particular novel. We've got justice, which means the right people should be punished for committing a crime, and the innocent people should be let go. That's justice. We've also got guilt.、Uh, if you regret what you've done, you might feel guilt. Or you might have a guilty conscience, as we said before. You just feel that what you've done was wrong, and you wish you could、uh, turn the hands of time back and do it again, or change your behavior. And we've also got the term retribution, which is kind of uh, uh, a punishment that you receive for、uh, doing something bad. Right. So you did something bad. You deserve to be punished, and that's what that is. Retribution is. Punishment that you deserve because you did something bad, and、uh, no one's going to feel sorry for you. I wanted to mention too before I move on, who done it is one word. How strange is that? So you can't miss it. It's W H O D U N I T. It's a who done it.、Um, some people I've read about this. Some people tried to you know correct this and and write it as a who did it. But nobody liked it because it's just not catchy.、Right. So this has been around for a long time, and we still use it. Right. Correct grammar would be who did it or who has done it. But、uh, of course,、uh, colloquially, it is pre- expressed as who done it. Yeah, that was a who done it novel, and I really liked it. Okay.、Yeah. That brings us to the midway point in our explanation for today.、Uh, we'll be right back after we hear from our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. 我是派老师。今天讲解的是暑期合刊 Unit Fifteen 第二天的课程。今天延续前一天的课程内容，继续介绍克里斯蒂的作品《一刻都不留》。前一天的课程内容，我们大致了解到故事情节是八个彼此不相识的陌生人一同到士兵岛上。那结果呢？在这里，他们遇到了怪异的管家夫妇。还不止这样子，后面呢？他们看到自己的房间上面有 nursery rhyme， 那所描述的呢是士兵，有十个士兵，一个一个怎么死的。那结果呢，在这个地方，同样在这个岛上，这个屋子里面，那也有人死去，而且死法呢跟 nursery rhyme 所描述的是一样的。那第二天课程内容呢，也进一步的介绍这个一个都不留的作者 Christy。好，那。Christie 的犯罪案悬疑作品可以说是经典作品了、哦。他所创作的叙事技巧，在后世呢是有很多人仿效的，会把嫌疑犯呢锁定在一群人里面，让读者或观众从里面抽丝剥茧，去找线索来破案。好，我们一起看学习重点。第一段第一个句子，这是一个分词构句 ，first published in 1939。那所指的当然是。后面这个小说 ，and then there were none。好，这一开始什么时候出版的呢 ？It was first published in 1939。那因为没有连接词，所以我们做分词构句。好，那这就是《谋杀天后》克里斯蒂的杰作。再来第二个句子，要请同学特别注意的是，啊、呃，我们看到就是啊 c h r i s t i 也就是主要子句的地方。Christy e s t o p s herself. 她创造出两个啊、呃、两个名侦探来。那她呢，也在这个领域，就我们说悬疑文学啊、犯罪小说这一类的这个领域呢，她确立了自己的地位
，请同学特别注意的是 establish 这个动词。好，那就是确立的它自己的地位，常常都是跟职涯有关的哦，这、就、个、是、职业生涯有关的。所以像呃，我们有一个形容词叫 well established， 也可以指呢，就是在某个专业领域呢，它的地位很稳固，它已经做了很久了。那他的专业是受到肯定的，比方说专业受到肯定啊的外科医师，我们可以说 a well-established surgeon。好，那再来我们看到第三个句子，第三个句子要请同学特别注意的是，这里有一个形容词在 her 后面 ，among her productive output， 请同学把 productive 画起来。productive 跟产品并没有关系，我们常常会用这个字来形容作者。作家，那表示他们所出版的作品很多，的确很多啊。Christy 总共有66部侦探小说，好，所以他是一个多产的作家。再来呢，请看到第四个句子 ，with a profound understanding of human psychology。profound 是一个很好的形容词，就是很深入的。我们知道 Christy 他的小说。之所以这么受到欢迎，这么畅销呢？最主要是因为他相当的了解人性、人的心理 ，profound 非常深入的理解。好，再来我们看到的是第二段的第一个句子。第一个句子在这里呢，我们可以看到，就是可以说是整个段落的主题句，因为这部作品就是在探讨正义、罪责和报应这些主题。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. And then there were none. We're talking about some of the themes in the book. And when we left you, we we're talking about how there were themes of justice, people getting what they deserved. <laughs> And、uh, those ten guests that were invited to go to Soldier Island、uh, deserved what they got, I must say. And also guilt, you know.、Uh, there were a couple that really did feel bad, badly about what they'd done in the past.、Mm. Uh, I think some were just trying to cover up what they did. They didn't really feel guilty. They just didn't want to be caught. They didn't want other people to know. But there were a few I thought that were. They sounded like they were better people. Then when you first heard what they did, you know you heard their crime, you heard what they'd done, and you were thinking, "Wow, that that person's really bad." But then, yeah, you know, you heard the full story, why, the details, and you thought, "Oh, maybe they're not so bad." But、uh, they all get a retribution; they all get justice. It's a tightly woven plot. Tightly woven means there aren't loose plot holes in it. Have you ever gone to a movie? And come away from the movie and thought, "Wait, that didn't make sense. They never answered this. What what happened to this character? They never they never finished the story on this one." Or we would we like to say in English, there was a plot hole so big you could drive a truck Mac or a Mac truck through it, which is a huge truck.、Mm. So there was a plot hole, meaning whoever wrote this really didn't think through clearly what what they wanted to do. But sometimes that happens when a movie is edited after they've already filmed everything, and it's actually the the fault of the director.、Mm, right, but this is a tightly woven plot. She、uh, deals with all the details, and、uh, it makes total sense as she's explaining things. And of course, the plot is tightly woven. The plot, of course, is just the storyline, what、mm. happens in the novel. Hey, what's the plot of the movie? Can you tell me what happens? And this、uh, plot compels characters. It、uh, Uh, gets them to confront shameful deeds from their past. If you confront something, you face it, and if something shameful, well, it's something that you regret and you feel embarrassed because you did that. So, of course, we've got shameful deeds. Oh, I once accidentally ran over my neighbor's kid or something. That was a shameful thing to do. I wasn't careful. I should have been watching where I was going. That's just an example. I never actually did that, but yeah, it could be a shameful event from your past that you like to forget about. But in this particular case,、uh, they are、uh, facing those shameful things that they did in the past because they're in this life-threatening situation here. Someone's killing all these people,、yeah. so it feels like, well, we better,、uh, we better fess up. You know, we better、uh, confess our crimes here so that we won't get killed or something. Because obviously, 
somebody's trying to get back at us for what we did in the past. Actually, I think one of the characters, if I recall correctly, tried to confess as they were being killed, but the person killing them just didn't care. Yeah,、mm, did them no good. It's a little late, guys. It's too late now. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they really felt badly about it, but no one wants to die when it for when it comes down to it, people will do anything just to live. So such is the novel's enduring appeal. The enduring appeal is because these these plots are so tightly woven.、Um, characters from that you think have nothing in common suddenly、um, their backgrounds are are interlaced. They、um, they go together. So yeah, it's an it has an enduring appeal. Enduring means lasting for a long time. So this novel is one that has been around for a very long time, but. Not just a long time; it's been popular、mm. for a very long time. I mean, they actually made a new TV series in 2015. That's kind of crazy. There are so many out there, so many different movies, plays,、um, TV series that have been made from this one particular novel. So it's got an enduring appeal. People like it; they're drawn to it. It's inspired numerous adaptations in film, television, and theater. An adaptation is just a change of form of something. So maybe a book was originally written. An adaptation would be something where someone takes the book and rewrites it so it can become a screenplay for a film,、mm. or maybe a stage play. So anyway, those are what they've been up to since she wrote it. The 1943 stage play adaptation was written by Agatha Christie herself. She did it, and it offered an alternative ending. This change to prove a few characters innocent highlighted her flexibility and sense of what theater theater goers saw for entertainment. I think、uh, readers may have come away from reading the book feeling like, "Wow, everybody was rotten. Everybody was evil in this." But if you go to a play in the theater, you want to walk out feeling kind of uplifted, kind of you know hopeful for the future. So what she did was when she was writing her、uh, her film,、uh, not her film adaptation, but the adaptation for her stage play,、uh, she actually changed the ending so that some of the characters were innocent, not all were really rotten people, which is fun.、Uh, but what does this show about her? She was flexible、um, in her own writing. If you highlight something, you kind of Uh, shine a light on it, bring it、uh, to someone's attention. If you're studying in a textbook, you'll take a highlighter, a marker that's called a highlighter, and underline the parts you want to remember for the test. So she was highlighting her flexibility by being able to change、uh, the stage play. <laughs> yeah, basically showed that she's very flexible if she's going to adapt her book into a play.、Yeah. Uh, she's uh, willing to、uh, make some changes. Uh, to fit the needs of the audience, theater goers at the time probably wanted to be entertained. They had been working hard all week, and they did not want to have a depressing, sad ending、uh, because they probably would have,、uh, uh, you know, maybe、uh, suffered mental illness as a result of that. Who knows? Also, going to the theater costs a lot of money. True. So, yeah, he- reading a book is cheaper than going、yeah. to the theater. So. Uh, she didn't want people to feel that they were cheated. She wanted so, them again, to be happy. Right. So that <laughs> highlighted. Or emphasized her flexibility, or the fact that she was flexible. She was willing to change、mm-hmm. according to circumstances. Now, moving on to the final paragraph, it says, "Christie creates suspense in the story through the use of the closed circle of suspects narrative technique." So, suspense here is when you really don't know what's happening, but you just want to keep reading on. You're hanging on because. Oh, it's a real tur- a page turner. What happens next? I really want to find out what happens. Some novels are like that; they're very gripping, as we say.、Uh, you just are glued to the page. You really want to know what happens. So, yes, you have a sense of suspense in the story. You just don't know what's going to happen. And this narrative is called the closed circle of suspects. Like they're all together in one place,、uh, like they are、uh, in the novel or、uh, Murder on the Orient Express. It's a kind of the the same technique. And if you go to a film and you're watching a film that's a thriller, that's another way to say there's a lot of suspense. We'll often say, "Oh, it had me on the edge of my seat." You know, you couldn't even sit back and relax. You were so nervous about what was going to happen. She confined characters 
、Uh, if you can find someone, you don't let them move very far. They're in a very tight space. So by confining characters and revealing that the killer is among them, she deepens the mystery. She wouldn't let them get off the island. They're stuck together. There's nowhere to go, and the killer is there.、Uh, focus on a limited pool of suspects pulls readers into a mind game of analyzing details in pursuit of possible clues. She was all about the clues. She wanted the the readers to really start analyzing everything that they were reading. This approach is mirrored or copied in contemporary works such as the 2016. Taiwanese TV series called "Close Your Eyes Before It's Dark." That sounds like a scary, scary TV series. I didn't see it. I don't have a TV, guys. But、uh, for those of you out there that saw it, you can probably understand what they're trying to do as they compare these two. Yeah, but it's using the same kind of technique. It similarly locates characters with an unidentified killer in a closed setting. So yeah, that would be a closed setting or situation. Like in that mansion on an isolated island, and pioneered by Christie, the technique continues to shape the mystery genre and prove her lasting literary influence. Okay,、mm. so lots of other people like this idea, and they try to come up with their own ideas、uh, to create a novel where everyone is in this closed circle of suspects narrative. And、uh, yes, indeed,、uh, people have come up with some pretty interesting movies and shows as a result of that. So setting is one of her vocab words, guys. Setting just means the place、um, or the type of surroundings where something is taking place, where an event's taking place.、Uh, we'll also say it was set. The movie was set in the 1940s.、Um, here、uh, we're talking about how she was identifying.、Um, she puts these、uh, characters with an unidentified killer in a closed setting in an area. That's where the that's where we're forced to live and be. And again, we're talking about the mystery genre or a type of book. That's a genre. Oh wow! Well, we hope you get a chance to either get a look at the book itself and read that, or check into that recent TV series. I can't recommend it enough.、Uh, made in 2015, and you can probably get it streaming somewhere. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher one more time. 再接着，我们回来看到第二段。第一个句子，请同学看到全面。It's tightly woven plot. 好，这里是主词的部分。这里所用的形容词是过去分词。想讲的呢，就是紧凑缜密的情节。好，那怎么样呢？让里面的角色 compels characters to confront shameful deeds from their past。好，所以 compel。To， 请同学画起来，逼着什么人得做什么事情。好，那再来，请看到第三个句子，这其实是一个倒装句。Such is the novel's enduring appeal that it has inspired numerous adaptations in film, television, and theatre。好，所以所要讲的就是这部作品，这部小说，它其实很有吸引力，而且呢。历久弥新，持久不衰，到现在还是有很多人喜欢这部作品。那这么喜欢，以至于后面交代的是结果，这么受欢迎，所以有很多电影、电视剧和舞台剧都是从这部小说改编而来的。那再来，请同学看到的是第五个句子，因为前一个句子指到有讲到 c h r i s t y 他本人呢、啊，其实在1943年的时候有把小说做改编来。让，呃，它成为舞台剧的剧本，可是结局不太一样。那结局不一样，哪里不一样？第五个句子就交代了。This change to prove a few characters innocent。请同学特别注意的是 ，prove 这个动词，它后面加受词以后，直接加形容词作为受词补语就好了。Prove a few characters innocent。那证明了呢，其中有一些角色它是清白的。好。那第三段呢，就是在介绍 c h r i s s y 他特殊的叙事技巧。他会呢把嫌疑犯锁定在特定的一群人当中，那会让这个读者呢有一种破案抽丝剥茧的快感。好，所以我们看第三个句子，会让读者呢，我们说他的故事是很引人入胜，会让人呢去想去参与这个什么 mind game 心理游戏。所以。
那锁定这一群嫌犯。那 What does it do? Pulls readers into a mind game. 好，再来呢，就我们看到第五个句子，这也是一个分词构句哦。主词是后面的 the technique。那这个写作手法，这种叙事技巧，由谁所独创呢 ？Christie。那之后就有很多人模仿。It was pioneered by Christie。那这里我们所做的是分词构句。好了。以上就是我们针对这个文学单元所做的中文讲解，希望同学喜欢 Christie 的作品，也去找来看。谢谢大家 ，See you next time. That's the end of our lesson for today. Thanks for joining us. But、uh, if you feel you want some more content, then check out our YouTube channel and also check out our Facebook page. We've got more information for you there. Please do check it out. And we hope you can benefit from it. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.